the title of my talk is Abstraction, Application and Pluralism. Um, and um, yeah, so uh, it's going to be a, about abstraction uh, principles mainly. Uh, it's This is really, to a large extent, uh, still work in progress. So um, yeah, I will be happy just in addition to any comments you might have, just also appreciate suggestions in terms of how I can develop the ideas uh, a bit more further. Um, so, um, yeah, so um, I will consider two conceptions of the natural numbers, either individuated as cardinal numbers uh, or as ordinal numbers. So traditionally, these uh, two distinct conceptions give rise to two different types of definitions by abstraction. So um, Phrygian abstraction and uh, Dedekind abstraction. So a central question uh, for the talk will be whether one of these conceptions are uh, is more basic than the other, or if they're both uh, should be accepted as equally legitimate conceptions of the natural numbers. So if they're equally legitimate, we send, seem to end up with um, multiple abstractionist reductions for arithmetic. Um, so one way to avoid this conclusion would be to argue that a particular conception is more basic than the other ones. Um, so I will consider two ways of doing this and argue that only one is um, uh, successful. Um, and uh, one interesting consequence of such a perspective then is that it seems to leave the choice between Phrygian and Dedekind abstraction as um, uh, independent of any particular conceptualization of the natural numbers and to a large extent um, uh, pragmatic question. Um, so um, I will start with introducing like just distinction between foundationalism and pluralism. So foundationalism is a view in the philosophy of mathematics uh, that all of mathematics is, is reducible to some foundational mathematical theory. So in the at least the first half of the 20th century, this was one of the main strategies of accounting for the content and epistemology of mathematics. Uh, so to reduce it to a single theory. Uh, ever since Paul Banasareff's famous influential papers, um, what numbers could not be, so philosopher has questioned theory reduction in mathematics. So even if we can reduce number theory to some set theory, for instance, it does not follow that our number terms will denote sets. So in general, it doesn't apply that the quantifiers of the reduced theory range of the same set of objects as the initial theory. Um, another view as regards to the foundation of mathematics has therefore been gathering momentum um, for some years now, and this view is called mathematical pluralism. There are several variants of this view. One of the most common ones um, is captured in um, one of the main theories about um, the foundation of mathematics, um, structure, mathematical structuralism. So structuralism comes in many guises, but one common feature is that they do not define a unique foundational system, for example, set theory um, uh, that mathematics can be reduced to. So instead, uh, structuralists uh, hold that mathematical discourse refer to abstract relational structures and that particular systems of mathematical objects, um, such as, for example, the natural numbers, are singled out only insofar as they provide a model for a given theory, for example, piano arithmetic. So this would be a pluralist conception since there are no unique, um, there are many different systems of objects that uh, can model the, the Deccan piano axioms. And so there is no unique reduction uh, of such a theory. Um, now, structuralism individuates abstract objects by their relation the relational properties, so by the relations they stand into other objects in the structure, and uh, both such a structure then and its objects or positions would be what is to uh, be defined in terms of uh, abstraction. So definitions of abstraction has gained much uh, philosophical attention ever since it was shown as part of the neologicist program 
that all of arithmetic can be reduced to second order logic with a single abstraction principle called Hume's principle. So Hume's principle is an abstraction principle, um, which is an instance of what I will call Frege abstraction or Fregean abstraction, as it forms a central part of Frege's um, attempt to reduce arithmetic to logic. But there is another type of abstraction principle, which I will call Dedekind abstraction, uh, representing a type of abstraction principle that most structuralist theories of mathematics are based on. Uh, so uh, one example is Dedekind's um, definition of uh, the concept of a sim simply infinite system. Uh, so the former type of abstraction principles may broadly be categorized as attempting to describe a particular system of objects that instantiates a particular concept, while the latter definition is typically defined the abstract type of su such systems, but both aim to determine the reference of our mathematical concepts. So Fregean abstraction uh, is a way of referring to abstract, abstract objects in terms of already known objects whose reference is less problematic. So it is a way of individuating or referring to abstract object by means of a criterion of identity that specifies what it takes for two objects to be identical. And it usually takes the form like this expression here, as you see, where f is a function taking objects from the right hand side uh, and giving new objects and the symbol uh, relating a and b on the right hand side here is uh, an equivalence relation. Um, and that's the whole expression uh, uh, determines an equivalence class of objects. Um, so one example of Friggin abstraction thought by the neologicist to provide a foundation for arithmetic is Hume's principle. And formally that says that the number of Fs is the same as the number of Gs, if and only if there is a one-to-one -one correspondence between the Fs and the Gs. And yeah, it is formalized uh, as this expression here. Um, with F and G is related by equinumerosity econo relation and um, the identity asserts identity between oops, the concepts of F and G. Uh, so Hume's principle lets us specify some objects can be identified with the natural numbers, which are in this way reduced to a range of independently specified objects. And one upshot of this way of, or this type of abstraction is that the reduction will be unique, so we're able to pick out a single model for the natural numbers. And um, if we can also be shown that uh, HP is a logical or analytic principle, then uh, the neologicist abstraction bears promise of an a priori foundation for arithmetic, which will motivate a linear or foundationalist perspective of mathematics. Um, so HP individuates the natural numbers by the cardinalities of the collection they apply to. To individuate the natural number as finite cardinals makes much sense, since we tend to think about natural numbers as numbering uh, members of a collection or instantiations of a concept. For example, that the number five is the number of apples on the table. Uh, another way of phrasing this would be to say that HP is a contextual or implicit definition of the notion of um, cardinal number, the concept of the cardinal number. Um, um, so another well-known method of abstraction comes from uh, Richard Dedekind's definition of the concept of the simply infinite system. Um, so I will present just a, a reconstruction of uh, Dedekind's um, definition uh, presented in Schimmer and Giovannini. 2019, uh, which is, um, differs a bit, but uh, should be structurally uh, similar to uh, Dedekind's definition. So uh, a set S is said to be simply infinite if there exists a function f on S and an element E on S such that the following holds, uh, one that f is a mapping from S onto itself, two that A is not in the image of S under f, and um, that f is a one-to-one -one function. And lastly, that s is the smallest set containing a enclosed under f. 
So it's the intersection of all such sets. Um, now, Schimor and uh, Giovannini argues that um, Dedekind abstraction may be characterized as an explicit definition of a higher order concept. Um, in this particular case, the abstract type of simple, simply infinite systems, which can then be identified as the natural number structure. Uh, and if this reading can be sustained, it would make Dedekind abstraction very close to modern versions of mathematical structuralism, in particular um, non-eliminative or the anti-rem structuralism that has been proposed by, for example, Stuart Shapiro. So, so perhaps not so surprisingly unstructuralist account of mathematics, Dedekind abstraction is preferred uh, over Fergian abstraction. Um, so uh, how are the numbers individuated on the structuralist account? Uh, Dedekind's way of thinking about uh, the natural numbers was as ordinal numbers. Uh, as positions in a sequence where the number five, for instance, is the fifth element. Um, and individuating uh, numbers in terms of their ordinal properties correspond to a conceptually different type of abstraction principle than Fergian abstraction. But it nonetheless serves to single out the reference of the natural numbers up to isomorphism or something like um, structural identity. Uh, and this fits very well with the central structuralist thesis that it is only an object's uh, relation to the other objects in a structure that matters for identification of reference. Hence, the natural number two simply refers to any object capable of playing the number two role in the natural number structure. So uh, now um, uh, we can ask uh, whether either of these conceptions of the natural numbers is in fact correct um, an answer to this question seems to be essential in order to determine which of the two types of abstraction principles should provide a foundation for the natural numbers so can we single out either the ordinal or the cardinal conception of the natural numbers as uniquely correct if yes how do we argue for this and if no uh, does this have the consequence that both abstraction principles legitimate uh, are re re legitimate reductions of the natural numbers. Um, if both reductions count as equally legitimate, then abstractionist reduction of the natural numbers seems to run into similar problems as set theoretic reductionism. It would seem to imply, uh, could seem to imply a pluralist or a structuralist foundation for arithmetic. So, um, Paul Benazraf, in his very influential objection to set theoretic reductionism, concludes that the natural numbers cannot be objects on the basis of an argument to the effect that there is no uniquely correct reduction of the natural numbers. So, for example, there is no principal way of choosing between the von Neumann ordinals and the Zamelo ordinals, since both reductions um, models are um, accepted theory of arithmetic, the Dedekind piano axioms. Um, however, these constructions attribute distinct properties to the natural numbers. So in von Neumann's construction, number three is a member of number five, while this is not the case on Samelo's construction. Now, the lesson learned from this has to a large extent been the driving force behind structuralist or pluralist mm -hmm. perspective on mathematics, um, which has gained a huge impact over the more traditional foundationalist perspective. The idea is to in, uh, construe of numbers as having no non-relational or non-structural properties so that we can still talk about the natural numbers as any system that models or satisfies um, our, uh, the piano axioms. Um, and this leads uh, naturally to pluralism since on such a conception, the truth of a theory can only be determined from a meta perspective and will therefore be relative to a meta theory or a structure. Uh, now, similarly, we may ask, is there a principal way of choosing between abstractionist reductions of the natural numbers using Fregean or Dedekind abstraction? So is either the cardinal or the ordinal conception of natural numbers um, correct? If not, this would seem to imply a pluralist, uh, but abstractionist foundations for arithmetic. 
Um, so can we single out either the ordinal or the cardinal conception of the natural numbers as uniquely correct? Um, if yes, how do we argue for this? Well, one nice feature about uh, Fregean abstraction is that it naturally respects what has come to be known as Frege's constraint. Uh, Frege's constraint claims, or at least uh, on Dummett's interpretation of Frege, uh, Frege claims that the distinguishing characteristics of arithmetic is its application, specifically its application in determining cardinality and that a satisfactory foundational account of arithmetic um, should reflect this fact. Uh, so the claim is that an adequate definition of a number must build its char characteristic applicability, um, build in its characteristic applicability. It must some somehow be something more than merely a formal definition. It should show how such a number can be applied in, say, in saying how many objects fall under a certain concept. Um, so perhaps not so su surprisingly, there seems to be a distinction between adherents of Fregean and Dedekind abstraction in their attitude towards Frege constraints. So philosophers working within the neologicist um, tradition tend to accept some version of this constraint for example, Wright, Hale, and Jared Warren, while those with a more structuralist perspective typically do not, such as William Tate, Sir Shapiro, and Erich Reck. Um, one might therefore try to argue for the cardinal conception of the natural numbers by sanctioning uh, the Frege constraint. Um, but uh, Dedekind's definition um, of uh, the natural numbers can be used to show uh, the applicability of numbers to determine both cardinal and ordinal properties. Um, and uh, consider this quote from William Tate. So when we are speaking of applications, what about the role of the natural numbers in the foundation of analysis, for example, in the foundation of the theory of rational and real numbers. What makes one of these applications of the natural numbers privileged so that it rather than others should be one of their distinguishing characteristics? Um, so Frege's refusal of Dedekind style abstraction um, could be understood more generally in terms of his conviction that um, definition of mathematical objects should be reducible to conceptual analysis. But from a structuralist point of view, uh, it's not clear uh, why an abstraction principle should have to respect such a constraint. Um, so there are two points I want to pick with the assumption that an abstraction principle must abide by Frege's constraints. First, it's not universally agreed upon exactly what the canonical application of arithmetic is or should be, uh, for example, uh, either as uh, determining cardinality or ordinal properties, um, or for example, as a foundation for other mathematical theories, such as analysis. And secondly, even if there were agreement on the preceding point, one might still be reluctant to accept that a satisfactory foundation, such as an abstraction principle in this case, must build its criteria for application into its core. Uh, so to take stock a bit, uh, I want to propose um, some hypothesis. So first, if Frege's constraint is unfounded, then one of the central advantages for Fregean abstraction over Dedekind abstraction disappears. Um, and second, um, if what I'm suggesting is correct, there seems to be at least some reason to question the argumentative support sustaining Frege's constraints. So unless there are any other clear advantages um, enjoyed by Fregean abstraction, uh, then the two types of abstraction principles should be seen as equally legitimate um, in the sense that they are both methods, uh, legitimate methods of individuating the natural numbers. 
but then we may conclude analogously uh, to Benassar with regard to set theoretic reductionism that there might be multiple abstractionist reductions of the natural numbers. Uh, and this seems to imply some form of pluralism about abstractionist foundations of arithmetic. Um, so, but such an argument might be a bit tricky, however. So, Harry Stein Linebu has presented several arguments in favor of the ordinal conception of the natural number as more basic. Um, he claims that we can individuate the numbers as both cardinals and ordinals, but goes on to argue that the ordinal conception is prior to and hence presumably more basic than the cardinal conception. Um, the way in which the ordinal conception is supposed to be more basic is by the order in which uh, ordinary lay people come to acquire basic mathematical concepts. Um, so one of his arguments centers upon the fact that um, uh, historically the number zero was not introduced until very late in the development of modern mathematics. Although if you look at it from the cardinal conception, it should not be considered too advanced uh, to realize that some concepts has um, no instances. Uh, now from an ordinal conception, however, it makes perfect sense that zero had to be added on later in the process since any sequence has a first but not a zeroth element. So Linnebo has several arguments in um, a similar um, style, which argues from um, the um, considerations about the uh, history or the actual mathematical or arithmetical practice. And he then goes on to show that the ordinal conception of the natural numbers, uh, or he argues that the ordinal conception of the natural numbers is basic and that it can be developed in a way that justifies the um, the Dekin piano axioms. Um, and interestingly, he argues that such a conception of the natural numbers need not entail a structuralist perspective. So he points to a way in which we can um, accept Dedekin's um, structuralist definition of numbers while rejecting the structuralist or pluralist solutions to Bonasarov's challenge of multiple reductions. So the argument seems to show that um, the choice between Fregean and Dedekin abstraction is independent of any particular conceptions of the natural numbers, um, and hence also is the question of pluralism. So we can agree that the ordinal conception is more basic than the cardinal conception, but this does not rule out a Fregean abstractionist approach. This means that a type of abstraction procedure that centers about criteria of identity need not um, rely upon Hume's principles as the neologicists tend to assume. So, of course, uh, one might try to push back on Linnebo's conclusion here that the ordinal conception is more basic than the cardinal conception. Um, so, for example, a pluralist might want to claim that the conceptions are equally legitimate. Um, and uh, Linnebo, for example, takes his proposal to provide a semantic individuation of reference. Uh, that is to single out objects in language or thought. And this is uh, what is supposed to sustain his arguments for the ordinal conception, which are largely um, based on the history or the actual arithmetical practices. So one could give arguments for why we should focus on um, metaphysical individuation of reference rather than a semantic one. Um, and that um, for such perspectives, it's not so clear that the question of which conception is more basic uh, is first and foremost an empirical or a psychological um, question that can be answered in the way uh, Linnebo uh, wants to do. Um, but I think the general idea of Linnebo's uh, proposal will still go through, however, since it seems that um, 
The main point he wishes to make is that it does not matter which conception one favors, uh, one may still rely on Phrygian abstraction, and hence the argument for pluralism is blocked. Um, so um, this, of course, is uh, not yet to uh, give an argument uh, for why we should prefer Phrygian over Dedekind abstraction, uh, but it seems to leave the question of pluralism as a largely pragmatic one and take some sting of the threat they're supposed to pose for uh, the foundationalist perspective um, on mathematics. Um, so, yeah, just to um, sum up here, so there seems to be at least two different um, uh, available options with regards to abstractionist foundations for arithmetic, either individuating the numbers as cardinals or as ordinals. If these are both equally legitimate individuation, we seem to end up with a type of pluralism about the foundation of arithmetic. Now, Linnebo presents a way to resist that conclusion um, by arguing first that the ordinal conception is more basic than the cardinal conception, and then show that a unique reduction is achievable via Phrygian abstraction, even assuming such a conception. Um, so the result of this seems to be that the question of um, a unique or multiple reductions of the natural numbers, and hence the question of pluralism, is largely a pragmatic one and um, independent of any particular conceptions of the natural numbers. Um, yeah, and here are some references. And yeah, that was it. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Julie. Are there any questions? Yes, I can do. Hmm. Looks like there are no questions. <laughs>